Well, my name is Agnete Holland, and I'm from Norway. I'm working in Norway. I am the president of FIA, the International Federation of Actors. So I'm both working as an actress and representing all the actors of the world as a FIA president. And I'm so honored to be in Beijing, and I'm so excited about what is going on here, and we're actually changing history. I'm Jean Rogers. I started acting after going to drama school, and um, I've been acting on and off for about 40 years now, a long time. Je suis Benoît Machuel, je suis violoncelliste et je représente également la Fédération internationale des musiciens. My name is Ferrandani, I'm a Canadian actor and I am thrilled to be here for the Beijing Treaty. Oh my God, we finally did it. Mi nombre es Esperanza Silva, yo soy actriz, soy chilena y represento a todos los artistas chilenos y también de Latinoamérica a través de Latin Artis. Hi, my name is Simon Burke, I'm an actor from Australia and I'm so honored to be in the room on this incredibly historic day when uh, when the Treaty for Audiovisual Performances has been adopted. Finally, after 51 years, audiovisual performers are not second-class citizens. Um, you know, along with audio performers and along with producers, along with authors, we are now recognized as having economic and moral rights over the content that we, that we perform in. And it's crazy that it hasn't happened before, but it's just, it's so, so important that it's happened now. So the Beijing Treaty is just, it's a marvelous, marvelous thing that is it's happening. And we have been working for this for like more than 20 years, lots of people all over the world, to make it possible for actors to keep on acting and for the audience to actually have the privilege of seeing all kinds of films, all kinds of movies, all kinds of audiovisual stuff. This is really a very exciting moment, I think, for actors around the world. Um, I'm also here as a vice president of my union, Equity, British e Equity, and um, so therefore I, I feel very responsible for all our members who work in the profession um, and who will be able to take advantage of a right now, um, a right not only to be paid, but to be recognized. I mean, there's a relief. There's a, a release of joy, I think, after all this hard work. 20 years is a long, long time. So today, there's sort of, it's a punctuation. It's the period. We did it. We got here. We're building respect for audiovisual performers all around the world. Ce traité est un magnifique accomplissement. Il s'adresse à l'ensemble de la communauté des artistes interprètes et vient combler une lacune très importante puisque seulement les enregistrements sonores étaient protégés. Aujourd'hui, les enregistrements audiovisuels le sont également. Donc les musiciens, avec leurs collègues acteurs et tous les autres artistes interprètes, sont maintenant, jouissent maintenant d'une protection qui couvre l'ensemble de leurs prestations. For performers, whether they're actors, singers, dancers, is very, very, very important. Uh, we live in a world now where broadcasting, um, the platforms are getting bigger and bigger, more and more of them. Our work goes out, we don't know where it's going, we don't know who's seeing it, um, and the opportunities for that to be played and, and you get no recognition are vast. But this treaty will, will actually put on record how important our role is. We interpret what people write, and writers have had these intellectual property rights, but the audiovisual performers haven't. But now, well, now the future is starting to open up for us, I believe. I was speaking, as you probably know, at the um, on behalf of the International Federation of Actors, which is quite a daunting thing. I have to say, for an actor to you know get dressed up in a suit for a start, usually you only get dressed up in a suit if you if you're playing a copyright lawyer, but um to actually come all the way to Beijing and uh, be one of very, very few performers in the room and actually to get to tell my story is, um, is a really important thing because, of course, there are all kind of you know, articles and uh, perambulations and oh, I can't even think of them. <laughs> Preambulations, sorry, and, uh, and uh, sta agreed statements and stuff like that, which, um, which different countries and different um, entities will, will argue over and try to get absolutely right. But the reason we're here is the absolute fundamental right to, uh, to have some economic rights and moral rights over 
over our work. Estoy muy feliz y creo que represento el sentir de todos los artistas hispanoamericanos de que se haya finalmente firmado este tratado de protección de los artistas audiovisuales. Es algo que por muchos años nosotros hemos estado eh, luchando para lograrlo y, y que lleve el nombre de Pekín, de esta ciudad llena de cultura, llena de, llena de historia, es para nosotros un gran honor. Well, I just think that finally, in the 21st century, um, we have come to a position where not just audio performers who have had these rights for, for many, many years, but audiovisual performers. When you think about what content is, every, the content that you and I look at every day. I mean, without performers, audiovisual performers, there would be no content. There might be a couple of wildebeests on the National Geographic Channel that we might watch, but I mean, basically everything that we watch, everything, all the stories that we, that we love and, and the way that we share our cultures is all about performers. So it's an absolute nonsense that the performers have never had, you know, enshrined in this treaty an ability to be able to bargain for their rights beyond, you know, beyond the first showing. Because if people are able to keep on acting and making good stories on, in the audiovisual field, which actually means basically films, I mean pictures that are moving, that means that the content will be conveyed to the audience and they will have much more audience to, to, to keep on enjoying and, or be provoked by or cry by or laugh by. I mean, we have the whole, the whole register of content here. The importance is that the actors all over the world will be actually able to keep on working and be protected when they work. It's interesting because I'm a stage performer as well as a film and television actor. And it's funny, you know, if I, if I go into a show every night, I've just been doing Mary Poppins for, for Disney in Australia, all around Australia. You know, I go and I do the performance, I get paid for that, that's it, goodbye. But if that performance is recorded, then it's there forever. And the fact that, you know, I don't have, that a performer may not have the right to uh, to enjoy the use of that that other people have is just it's just crazy really and uh, I think the interesting thing that uh, Javier Badem said in, 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 in our video is that uh, it's not just about the big stars it's not just about the big marquee names that we all know and love it, but it's about hundreds and thousands of performers from every different country regardless nationality or language or media or celebrity it's about protecting all of us because performing is an incredibly an incredibly difficult life that you choose. You don't, you have to really want to do it to, uh, to make it your career because it's such a hard career. And uh, so any help that we can have at all to, to feel professional, to, to have the dignity, to continue our professions um, is, is, is welcome. This is so wonderful that we've, at long last, after what, 18, 20 years of debating, we're here at a moment where things I think can, turn around the corner for performers um, because of um, the way in which um, our work is there, there's a feeling that anyone can do it whereas in point of fact we are proud to be artists we train we have experience we feel we have a value and I think the most wonderful and significant part of today is that that value is now being recognized. Well, the thing about this treaty is that it stamps once and for all into, you know, into international kind of acceptance that performers have um, the rights to uh, economic and moral rights for, the, for their performances. We all start the really hard work of going home to our governments and saying, we've done this in the world, now you at home in my government, wake up, implement this, ratify this, make it international legislation, make it real. El mensaje para todos los gobiernos eh, en esta nueva etapa donde ya se ha logrado el consenso aquí en, en, en Pekín es que no tarden, que no tengamos que esperar años para que esto sea ratificado por los estados. Este tratado va a beneficiar no solamente a los artistas, sino a la cultura del mundo en general. This week in Beijing, because of, I mean, the, the presidents that we've had and, and, the, and, and the way that the process has, has been, has, it's been there's been this incredible positivity in the air and like people that I've seen in Geneva walking around with sort of worried faces or long faces all because of this kind of there's been a momentum here and the the, the lawyers and the copyright guys and the, and the representatives from various countries around the world you've just felt ever since we've been here this kind of there's been this hum that something is going to happen and I have to say that when I made my speech on behalf of the International Federation of Actors it was towards the end that I kind of, it kind of started hitting me that 
how it, how historic this is. That this is something that that is so right and and so uh, so just, and it's finally uh, it's finally coming true.